Yo. What's up, bro? Youngsters. How are you? Um, good, man. How are you guys? Yeah, not too bad, yeah, eh? Yeah. Just chilling. What are you up to? Um, just lots of Zoom chats and uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah you've been, already, been yeah. doing one every night. Hey? <laughs> it's good. Yeah, I'll, it was actually more like just a couple of days where I just chatted to people all day. Like I've got, I've got heaps of chats that I haven't had time to edit and all that. Oh, so, oh really? Oh shit. Yeah, so I just started to I started doing it just because I had to keep in contact with people, and then I did it socially, and then um, yeah. what was the first one when I had Kennedy. And just you've had some pretty good people, eh? Yeah, you got big compared names. to us. <laughs> yeah, well, um, yeah, they were kind enough to. I said to them, well, one of them said, we, um, you should record this and post it on College Park, kind of jokingly. And I recorded it anyway, and then I edited it and sent it through to them and said, I just want to like put this on College Park. Yeah, and I took out anything that kind of like didn't make sense to people, like, but any of the general basketball chat, I just kept in there, yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, and then people, I don't know, just something to do. And um, now, now there's like a lot of people wanting to chat. And so I thought, yeah, I might as well. Yeah, yeah it's a good idea. Yeah, definitely. Some dude Jack's trying to get in on this. <laughs> oh, Jack. <okay. laughs> He's always the last one with technology. There we go. Hey. <laughs> What's up, mate? What's up, coach? What's up, team? How we doing? Good. How are you? Good, yeah, good, good. <laughs> Just let me know if my audio is um, trash or if it's echoing or something. I can get some headphones, but yeah, no, that sounds good. good. Sweet. Yeah, yeah, it's um, yeah, I'm still like I'm not very good with editing and stuff, <laughs> so I'm noticing that like every chat I've had, there's like one person basically yelling, and then another <laughs> person basically like talking real quiet, <laughs> and so I don't know, but hopefully they're not okay. going to learn to listen. <laughs> It's, it's really noticeable. I'll do the editing, and then I'll put it on my big TV, and then it's real noticeable. Then I'm like, oh, so learning, <laughs> like, turn some people up and some people down, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, tricks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're not living with these two, Jack? No, nah, no, nah, I've flattened town. These right. guys are way out and way out in your Brighton, so yeah, sure. a bit closer to everything over here. Yeah. I don't know if I could put up with them 24 seven either, so it's uh. kind of good. I just pick and choose when I when I spend time with them. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. He just comes over and eats all our food, really. That's what he means. Yeah. That's yeah. the luxury. That's when you can, just when you're meet, when you're in the mood to see family, yeah, bits and pieces, it's perfect. And it is. It really is. I don't have a choice with this guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely a bit of those sorts of guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little tough. <laughs> hear that, Jack? <laughs> I didn't hear that. Jimmy's mumbling again. <laughs> Typical. Oh, I need to move forward. Jimmy always mumbles on, on, on calls. Well, there's, that was one real bad. I don't know why, but I just do. With the, um, with the boys All Star game, which I love, by the way, that you guys did it. Um, <laughs> there were heaps of times where uh, I could. Yeah, I was it. real quiet. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, and I was real loud. It was like. Oh. Well, she was cons she was consistently loud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, no. I don't really <laughs> notice it too much, it. but I, I, then I could chop it up, and then I could like increase your voice at times and stuff like that. So <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but no, I, I loved it. I thought, I thought it was refreshing, and I was I originally had really glad you guys ended up doing it. And then I asked you guys to do the second half, and then I think the day before, my I was like, if you can just do the whole game, and it worked out perfect. <laughs> yeah, um, that game wasn't too long, so it wasn't too yeah. hard. Yeah, it was a pretty good watch. It was pretty funny. Yeah, it was refreshing. I liked it because <laughs> the first thing that when I was watching it, I was like, man, the crowd thing really irritated me because it was like. Horncastle is so such a beautiful venue, but yeah. was like, especially for the girls' game, there's like nobody there. It yeah. was so quiet. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then like working with Skyers, they were like they would tell us when the game could start and when they wanted us to stop, and it was they had to rig cameras and all that, and it was a real pain. Mm. But so the, I think the boys warmed up for like an hour. It was like uh, really. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, girls, <laughs> the girls started at one, and then the boys played. I think like two and a half hours later and then after the boys game they asked everybody to leave the venue because i think they wanted, they wanted to do like um entertainment uh rehearsal so it was really weird oh, yeah. and finished and i'm like okay can everyone please leave and i'm like what and so people had to leave and then get food or whatever and then come back for the breakers game oh what, what the heck? yeah 
And so I don't know if you guys, because I think four days before the All-Star game, Sky hit me up and were like, yep, we're in. Uh, I was just like, it was, yeah. Yeah. So I, can, so I canceled my production team and then they were like, oh, and we need it to be running clock. And I was a bit gutted about that, but. Yeah. yeah. But it was a quick that's game. Good. And that's what all the guys said was they couldn't get into the flow because it was, it was just such a quick game. Yeah, it was really quick. It went by like really fast. Yeah. yeah. That's but, you know, that you got that late. That sorry. late notice. Yeah, dude, honestly, to deal with, when it was just me doing it and it was at a high school venue and my only challenge was to pack out the gym, I was pretty excited because it was pretty achievable. And then dealing with the Rams, Horncastle Arena staff and Sky Sports was, it was yeah, such a process. Wild. I was like, you guys are only doing it if I, if I own the content. Like, that's a whole point. The whole reason why we did this was for me to film it. But I don't want yeah, to see my yeah. film crew there when you're going to have your fancy ass cameras and like people. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you guys can do it, but I, it's our content. And so yeah, I was yeah, yeah, yeah. real firm on it. And so I um, managed to get like the top people at Sky to like sign that off. I was, and once I got that, I was pumped because then it was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was yeah, it really was good quality. Yeah, quality. Yeah, it was real good production. But then it was kind of pointless because it was kind of like the whole reason why I did it was to, to film it for College Park and go mm. through that process of like filming a game and all that stuff. So Yeah, true, um, yeah. It's all good. It worked out good in the end. But yeah, this year, I'm going to do it again this year and I'll put it in a small gym, just pack it out. Yeah. Cows or something, yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if we can, we don't have Middleton supporters. If we've got Middleton supporters, we could do Cal Stadium. But uh, otherwise we'll have to Yeah, go. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can just promote it all year, right? Eh? <laughs> yeah. There's people there. Yeah. I end up talk. I end up editing myself out because I talk way too much. <laughs> and, um, yeah. and then when I hey that poster on your wall, that's that Snake Robinson, Jack. What's that's that? Kobe. It's Kobe Bryant. Oh, that's Kobe. Oh, there's a Nate Robinson one as well. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's a Kobe one. But um, yeah, I think I've seen that Nate Robinson one as well. But yeah, nah, had the Nate Kobe Bryant. You got that for me. Yeah. Nice. Before, before everything went down, so it was pretty cool to have it up there now. I got a bit of a shine. Got a few different things. Well, when I had um, when I was talking to Chris Duhon yesterday, he played with Kobe, and so I was like, I wanted to ask so many questions, but Jeez. he tells a couple of good stories about Kobe, which was really interesting. So, oh, that'd be good. Yeah, but it's hard to know where to start with him though, because he he's such a great guy, but he at every level he's dominated. And he's played for like Chicago Bulls, the Knicks, the Lakers, Orlando. Yeah. And he's like one of Duke's all time leaders. He's the all time leader in minutes, all time leader in steals, second in assists. Sheesh. Oh, right. Crazy. So. That's insane. Now, he was an amazing player. That'll be a great chat. Yeah. So have you already done that, Joe, and you're just still editing it, or are you about to do it? No, so we've done it. Um, so I've edit edited most of it. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, I just wanted to um, check with you guys because uh, I was still pretty disappointed that I couldn't get you guys to the all-star stuff. And I still don't think people understand like how accomplished your family is last year. <laughs> like I know, Jack, you picked up some silverware for your coaching efforts. So that's pretty, pretty legit. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was cool. But yeah, it was, um, that was more credit to, yeah. Oh, Zach Lilburn, the other the assistant as well, and then all the boys. They just had a really good group, to be honest. But yeah, but yeah, we had a pretty good year last year, that's for sure. Yeah, it was one of those years where I don't think anyone else should really bother. Like, um, at South Island, <laughs> I don't think I've seen a team cruise before, apart from when Otago had um, Timmins and Joe Cook. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and ten other awesome players that year. Yeah. Um, they they cruised through South Islands and we pl we played them in the final and we played a perfect game and they comfortably beat us by twenty and we played a perfect game. <laughs> I was pumped yeah. with my guys playing that well and it's just not even. They, that's the year they won nationals. Yeah. Um, Ridiculous. Like, that, yeah. 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 <laughs> but and you guys were cooking everybody. So when I found out that was the final, I'm like, who's going to watch that? Like. But, <laughs> yeah, you guys left just just left that. <laughs> oh yeah, it was just dumb. But, um, the Cashmere semi final could have gone either way. The Cashmere semi final, I think that was the final, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, it was final. Yeah, one of those ones. Yeah, they oh. they, they were a great. They were definitely a great team. Yeah. So I guess I mean it was we it was definitely a great run. Stack and Stack Stack started playing the best basketball probably at that at that tournament. Yeah, that's the whole key yeah. is playing at the like 
I don't dismiss the Thompson Trophy, but with my Burnside teams, we wouldn't be worried about the Thompson Trophy results so much. It was about getting ready for South Islands and being ready for South Islands because yeah. if you have a great Thompson Trophy but then don't go to Nats, it's kind of, you know, it does, I don't know. I just it's don't think definitely not as good, yeah. Thompson Trophy is yeah. more like preparation and a way to kind of like see where you're at. And, yeah, you know, 100%. Yeah. But, um, and I think Cash, to credit to Cashmere, they had really good timing with their run as well in terms of Nats. They started playing like a really good style of play that suited them. Yeah. yeah. They yeah, started playing stuff a lot Nets, more. Yeah. So they like kind of learned throughout that whole season. So it's credit to Paul and that group. Yeah. Yeah. But I thought that was impressive. Yeah. They, I didn't, I, I watched, I think, one of their games that was televised, but, um, you could just see that they turned it on. Like, yeah. you, you do see it. Some teams go to nationals and, you know, people talk about they've got an easier pool or whatever, but um, not cashmere, but, you know, some teams get an easier pool um, and some teams get the pool of death, but then other teams just turn it on at the right time. And um, I remember, yeah. you, know, James, you know, James Cawthorn? Yeah, yeah. yeah. His Lincoln team, they were very average going, like all season, <laughs> very average. And then at South Islands, they clicked. And then James Cawthon was at least 50 points a game. But their whole team just, like, all just stepped up. And so we thought we were going to go to Nationals that year. But I'm pretty sure that they knocked us out in pool play. And mm. during the season, we would have it wouldn't have been close. It would have been comfortable 20, 30 point win. So some teams do turn it on at the right time. That's the whole goal as coach, though, right, Jack? That's the whole thing. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. yeah. It's, you've got to have the, the team just climaxing at, that, at the tournament time, eh? And yep. it's a really hard thing to do, for sure. Mm. Yeah. yeah, You edit out the trash talking yeah. bits and then there's some <clears throat> better combos in there. But um, This is pretty much our combo at the dinner table anyway. This is how we talk at the dinner table all the time when we're together. Well, I, yeah. think that's what, I think that's what everyone's... Okay, so you guys are quite well respected. Like, you guys are within that Middleton camp and it is what it is. You guys have a great culture. You've got a successful program. Um, by the way, I've got Tim Bennett and Ben Sheet on a chat up next. Oh, so, good stuff. That'll be good. That'll be a good chat. We'll be, I'll be talking trash for sure. There'll be, <laughs> yeah, it there'll was be some great under 20 from like 2011 through to like 2015 kind of chat in there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I think it was, I think out of us three, it was one of us winning it every year in the, in the yeah. before 2020. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I think Boys High had a good team one year, but apart from that, it was just, it was either Cashmere, Middleton or Burnside for a long time. So yeah. I, I became really good friends with those guys and me and Bennett's were so close that I mean, after every single Thompson Trophy game, we'd talk on the phone and um, just have vent <laughs> about things. So it's so cool for me, like being old enough to know where the Middleton, like that Middleton history. But um, what I was going to say was like people at Middleton know that, that you guys are like, um, you know, the Williamson family and probably know you guys a bit more personally. But on the outside, you guys are just this like insane family of like, ballers and um one of the things that we wanted to like capture like one of the like one i needed that photo of all four of you at the all-star so that bothered me but then like i just think it's i think people were just curious about what your what it's like in your household and like <laughs> how you guys are because it's there's never going to be four people from one family at an all-star game ever at anything so yeah i find it really really interesting well, I mean, yeah, it's usually a basketball chat. Like, yeah, every dinner we have. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Jack's missus comes around. She like yeah. just sitting there. Like, uh, <laughs> we do apologise to her because we always just end up talking about basketball. Yeah. Yeah. We could easily sit around the dinner table for two hours, and it's just pure basketball chat. But yeah. And like, because Dad's kind of into it as well, even though he's not as involved in like the Canterbury basketball scene as much. But yeah. Yeah. yeah he he doesn't mind it, and so we it just it just goes for two hours talking about anything. Gosh, anything yeah. Great debates. It's good. Yeah. yeah, the debates are good. Yeah, it gets a little bit heated sometimes. <laughs> not, it, it not always about the Canterbury basketball scene. Sometimes it's just talking trash about our own games, own childhoods. Yeah. yeah. Do like to think that they had better shooter than me back in the day, but just... Uh, oh, well... Conversation. We've had some crazy one-on-ones and stuff back in the day and stuff like that, eh? Yeah, always hoping. Like, whenever we... Even when we travel, like, we always bring or buy a basketball in every country. So we're yeah, always yeah. hoping, like, there's... I have photos in my room of us hooping in like so many di different states in America and like Asian countries. Yeah, it's wild. Is it how, does your parents meet through basketball? No, they, they meet through social netball, I think. Yeah, 
Yeah. No, they met through other stuff. They weren't. Mum was a pretty big basketball fan um, <laughs> her whole childhood, but Dad wasn't ruined basketball. Uh, Dad likes to say he was a bit of a baller at Xavier College. He always talks about his career, but I think he hyped up a bit more than it needs to be hyped up. <laughs> Um, people, I used to laugh at older people saying the older, the older I got, the better I was, but, um, it's true. <laughs> the older I get, the more I'm hyping myself up to my son now. Like I was basically, <laughs> I basically like a Christchurch version of LeBron James when I used to hype <laughs> up to my son. So I think, so in 10 years time, I might be just talking way too much garbage and people just <laughs> like, oh yeah, cool. Great story. So, um, it's very good. Yeah, Dad always says he's like he shoots like Larry Bird. Eh? Yeah, oh, yeah. when he was hooping, he'll like <clears throat> he'll he'll shoot a fadeaway jumper. He's like Larry Bird, <laughs> and then it bricks. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he'll do a hook and he'll be like Kareem. <laughs> I'm like Dad, shut up. Well, I'm at um, I'm working at I'm having like a gap year, so cool. some some um money. Yeah, so I'm working at Scorpion Supplements. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, like um with Fraser. Oh, you're nice. Company, yeah, so I'm just doing the production stuff there, yeah, full time. It's pretty chill. Have you seen some gains? Who, me? Yeah. Nah, not really, eh? <laughs> I, I don't like my body weight stuff, so I've been struggling in lockdown, eh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I did, I did the same thing after high school. I, there was, I, I needed a year just to kind of, like, figure things out. And um, some people are a bit negative about it. I reckon it's a fantastic thing to do. Like, you know, I've like, learned so much in like this like four months out of school, yeah. right? It's crazy. Well, like if, if somebody like rushes you into doing something, like even some of the, the amount of people that go to university and then after a year or two be like, this is not what I want to do. Yeah. I, yeah. So and like the often, uni was all online this year. So that would, I mean, like, like yeah. you said, that would have been kind of niggly, but yeah. yeah, I'm kind of glad that I took the year off. So, no, it's pretty chill. Had the girls had, had the girls and boys programs kicked off at Middleton before the lockdown? No, nah, not not really. We're pretty much just about to really. Um, yeah, we're we in the trial. We had our trials and that kind of thing. Yeah. But so pretty much, yeah, no trainings. We probably start a bit later than most other schools. Um, just like we always trying to prioritise, just like being climaxing at tournament and nationals if we can make it, rather than um, yeah. So. And we kind of had it, we still got a, a lot of our core group, so it didn't matter starting, you know, if starting super early. So we planned to kind of start the week that we went into lockdown. So pretty much just been doing Zoom calls and that kind of thing to catch up and we'll start trainings on Monday. Yeah. Oh, wow. We've been doing fitness trainings since like last year, eh? Oh, yeah. Well, that's what we try and do over summer, like that early, that, well, that first term is just like t a couple of fitness trainings a week. Yeah. Yeah, it's a better way to start trainings and people can actually get up and down the court versus um, yeah. <laughs> dudes calling for subs every two minutes. So, um, yeah, 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 better way to be. Because um, I saw, I just saw on the Gators page that they announced a trial for Wednesday, I think, of girls 17. Oh, something yeah, like that. club team. How good will it be just to walk into a stadium and just see oh. people, you know, like all your basketball mm. people? Uh, mm. Yeah, yeah, when I found out that we were training on Monday, I almost cried. Like, literally had tears forming in my eyes. It's just <laughs> been so long without being in a basketball gym. And it's just like, you can hoop, like, you know, down the road at the park, but it's just not the same. No. And it's all good for, like, two or three weeks. But I think at this stage, yeah. it's just like, you know, just missing that interaction. And well, we've done such a good yeah. job as a country. So I'm feeling yeah, for good sure. about us being healthy. And people were talking about not having um, South Island's Jack, which I thought was kind of crazy because... It's good to be cautious today, but I think if you think how well we're doing, if we're still doing that well in a month's time, you know, I can't see why you can't have that conversation to have South yeah. Island because before South, before South Island, this is my old man voice, um, and we had, <laughs> we had regionals. Regionals <laughs> is, is tough, man. Like, you know how you played Kashmir in the semifinal? Yeah. Well, could you imagine if that's, it, you'd already qualified, well, pretty much already qualified for our Nats, but at the regionals, you have to be in the final. So almost every year, yes, Murphy yeah. Law, the two best teams would face off in a semi-final, and then the oh. two average teams, or like even maybe a bum team, making the other, <laughs> final, you know. Um, um, <laughs> but like it, it was always the two best teams in the semi-final, so it was always so rough. You, one of them would get knocked yeah. out and then beat some other team in the final yeah. by thirty, but that team that got whooped in the final qualified for that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Way yeah. harder, way harder. Yeah, and I'm really. 
banking on there still being a South Island tournament. I think it's good. BB, like BBNZ, they seem to like be not, they're not making any rash decisions early on, whereas yeah. some sports are just going ahead and just canning everything. Well, they did yeah. early on. But basketball seems to kind of like, they're just holding off and making late decisions. So I'm still hopeful that it'll happen in September or maybe a little bit later. Yeah, I am. Yeah, I definitely am too. I think, yeah. And it's cool that they're going to catch up by doing, for Thompson Trophy, doing like, you know, double headers every second or third week. I think that's a good way to do it. Like, um, yeah, yeah, heck yeah. Good way to get caught up on things. And it's some of the results in the beginning are going to be so ugly. Like, <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's going to be interesting. Um, yeah, you're going to have some really, you know, you're going to have a couple of bum teams that did hardcore training at home. And so they'll, yeah. they'll run up some talented teams. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They'll be like, yeah. I think all around the, sh- the shooting percentages might be pretty rough. Yeah. <laughs> People have this amazing ball handle, you'd hope. Everyone will have amazing handles from just pounding away for two months. In the <laughs> Actually, you know what? Tim Bennett, um, shout out Tim Bennett. He had a great point. He messaged me about, four, I think it was about four weeks ago, and he just said, could you, everyone's at home practicing on a hoop by themselves. Could you imagine how many guys are going to come back into, you know, high school basketball thinking they're Kobe? And it's a good point because you <laughs> think about, so it was all just working on their own shots and things. And so they're going to yeah. get game. They're like, oh, baby, they're going to be calling over us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so true. So it'll be interesting. So, um, yeah, no, nah, it'll, be, it'll, be, it'll be good. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it, though. I'm, I'm really, I'm so relieved. When they ranked us 10th, I had such a good chuckle. And, like, it makes sense because we lost, our, you know, our top seven guys pretty much. But mm-hmm. the guys we've got left behind are pretty, like, they've, they've all improved a lot. So... And yeah. um, so it's nice going into a season rank 10th. It's a first for me. But even if we come 7th or 5th, I'm a great coach because we didn't come 10th. You know what I mean? Like, we improved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's what you want. Like, we, our Middleton team was 5th last year. Yeah. Oh, really? That's it. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's the best thing ever, getting yeah. ranked. Whether help you put a chip on your shoulder. Like, Jim will attest to this. We, like, used that as motivation the entire year. And when we got to the Thompson Trophy final, before the final, we printed out the Thompson yeah, yeah. rankings list and circled the fifth and just gave <laughs> it out to the guys and they just loved it. That's awesome. I love nice. it. Yeah. yeah. We put it up in trainings and stuff. Eh? It was classic. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to print that out and then take it to St. Thomas at the end of the season and ask for a pay rise because <laughs> I can guarantee we'll do better than 10th. So, um, yeah. Sure. That's how I'll justify that request. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. No, it'll be interesting. I can't. I just can't wait. It'll be. It's funny to think in like three weeks we could have a game or like three and a half weeks. It's like. Yeah. So I'm gonna be um. The whole time I thought when we start trainings they were gonna be like, I'll be running them like how I was because we had already started training and um. But I'm gonna. They're gonna be such. They're gonna be. They're gonna be light light workouts. Like I'm not mm. gonna be getting them to do like double suicides or anything like that. Like. Um, because I know some of them went hard and I know some of them were chilling a little bit too much. So, um, yeah. yeah, don't want to see those injuries be too crazy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 People, have def- people definitely have, um, are not respecting Middleton for this season for sure. Um, and it's quite funny because I understand the strength and what you guys did coaching wise and what that culture is and also your systems and like what you guys run. So I think you guys can use that as motivation again this year because yeah, I'd love to, I, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys play this year. Like yeah. how it's, how it's going to be different to um, last year's group. Or, yeah. Yeah. Or, I think, I think it's going to be fun. Definitely a different group. Uh, I think everyone's kind of, yeah, a lot of people riding us off a lot of losing four starters and that, but yeah, it's going to be, it'll be pretty fun. This is still definitely a, a talented group. Yeah. Hopefully we can give those um, give those private schools a good run for their money still. Right? <laughs> Don't get me started on private schools. I know, right? <laughs> Don't get me started on private schools. Uh, man, I, I think anyone beating a private school this year, I'll be so happy to see that. So, um, yeah, I think I think Christ are looking pretty solid in that top spot, Jack. But oh, yeah, um, for sure. yeah, I don't think so. I think St Andrews. I don't. I, I I can't give them the nod over you guys, Shirley or St Beads. I can't say they're better. So um, I think they have the capabilities of playing well because they've got a lot of shooters and things, but I don't know. I'm just not. Yeah, they're yeah. real guard heavy, eh? They're real yeah. guard heavy. Tane and um, Totahi from my team stopped by yesterday. They were going to the park to put up some shots, so I got some good information from them. It was a pretty hard case. But, um, oh, is he going to play for you this year? Yep. Oh, that's cool. I love he's such a, He's such a good I, dude. Not many people realise that. He can, he's a nice kid. Because he's somebody um, who, 
yeah, if he goes hard with basketball and gets in shape, he's going to, man, he could be really, really, really good. Yeah, so, he's a big drive, eh? Like, once he puts his mind on something, he'll <clears throat> work for it. Yeah. And so what was fun for That's me was the leader as well, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he talks way too much. He talks yeah. much. <laughs> He, he know, gets a bit angry. <laughs> did you know he burst my eardrum um, last year? I had, real pro- I had real problems with my right ear. Um, <laughs> we were in a game. I think it was at Middleton. It was a 20s game. And he was next to me. He wasn't playing. And he constantly screaming. And he yelled yeah. something. And, yeah, I, he, I got a legit oh eardrum. Yep. Oh, so yeah. he's not allowed to sit next to me on the bench. He's not allowed to sit near me. He has to sit on the far end because like <laughs> he's too loud. But he's a he's a he's a good kid, and I hope he just if he sticks with basketball and goes hard with it, he'll he'll yeah. be really good. Now he should be he should be sweet. I reckon. Yeah, I quite um I quite value our relationship. Like I we we chat all the time, and so yeah. I'm just hoping that that's one of the reasons. Like that's one of my goals this year is just to get him. Yeah. Get him yeah. enjoying basketball, you know. I think for a lot of people, um, that's why that's why I started coaching was because if I didn't have basketball in high school, man, I wouldn't have achieved much. Like I wasn't that good sure. academically, um, <laughs> so I needed some sports in my life. But um, yeah, he's one of my guys. If he sticks with basketball, yeah, he'd be pretty good. But um, yeah, yeah. So when you you started training, Joe, have you started like implementing some systems early on before lockdown? Or was it mainly just skills in that? Do you be putting in the systems in that now when you go back? Yeah, so I, I did start with the system because um, St. Thomas had a huge weakness um, offensively, and I won't go into details, but on one aspect of the game, you probably know what it is. And so I, I, if they didn't have that as a weakness anymore, they'd be pretty good. So, um, but it's all, I kept it really basic. It's just basically about, you know, defensive effort for me. The good thing about having lost all those players um, is it's a young group. So I like that idea. I've got two year mm. teams who will be playing a whole bunch of minutes. So, mm. um, yeah, it's nice to start with a group that are keen to get the fundamentals and the basics down, right? So to teach yeah. team, it's just going right back to basics, like what a high percentage shot is, you know, when when it's fast break and when it's not fast break. And Division 2 kids look at box scores a bit more than, you know, what yeah, yeah. we might. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Just gone off into a deep thought. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I really, really miss the Burnside, the, the Burnside program. So for me, I'm like dead set on. Um, I'm I'm going pretty hard with that, and I know that I can. And I love the challenge of having two tenth or worst ranked teams. And um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love yeah, it. Yeah, it's a big challenge. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So at, at Burnside, we were always um, they'd always give us favourites tags, even. Even some years when Cashmere had a better team or Middleton had a better team, we'd always get ranked one. And um, I liked it at first, but then after a wee while, I prefer not to have that, you know. Like, if we didn't win, it was a disappointment and, like, a failure. So it's it's refreshing to be, like, people looking at us like we're bums. And um, yeah, exactly. your, your friends at Rickerton, um, Jack, uh, are talking trash to my kids saying, we're going to whoop you this year. Uh, and I love it. You know, it's such a fun place to be. You know, I've got all these 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 low ranked teams, you know, coming for our head. I love it. So um I reckon it will reckon be in the Div One. I think they are, because Div One's twelve teams, I think. Um, How even goes to Rickerton? Is that your boy, um Ash Adam? Ash, yeah. Ash Adamson. Yeah, yep. yeah. Is he coach Rickerton? They they yeah. still have um I think Ender's there as well. They've they Ender, they're yeah. the right team, but <laughs> it's funny yeah. they're talking trash. That's good. Yeah, we do. I sort love of it. A rivalry. Yeah. The, the upper yeah, record so. of rivalry. <laughs> so it was good motivation for our group. Um, in our group chat early on, one of them's good friends with a couple of record and guys, and he comes back. He's like, "Yo, fellas, record and reckon they're gonna beat us by twenty, and they reckon." <laughs> and I was like, "Yes!" And they were so outraged at that. They're like, "Oh, no, no." And so, um, yeah, it's good. But everyone thinks that's what I hope is. I think we'll beat a couple of these top ranked teams, no problem. Um, so it's going to be good. I think I think we're right there behind the top five, um, but we're going to have some painful owls on the way. Like I think, yeah. I think even though I can explain theory to them to actually see it in a proper game, like I can talk about how important team rebounding it because we don't have bigs. We don't have a Tom Webley this year. Um, Who are the like the main guys in that St Thomas group? Um, so our main guys will be uh, Louis Delatoire, um, 
Jake Banks has improved a lot. Jake Banks is going to be pretty key for us this year. Great kid. You'd love him, Jack. He, great leadership. Just perfect. Last year, he was at the end of our bench, and he, he never spoke because he was such a rookie, you know? Yeah. Um, this year, he's really his leadership is fantastic. So, um, Kobe Northmore. Um, I'm really big on Louis Gordon, who's a year 10. Yeah. Um, I'll be oh, starting yeah. him, and I'm going to be... Yeah, I, I'm working with him quite a bit. Um, yeah, he's crazy good. Oh, and Peter Taylor. Peter Taylor has improved drastically. He can shoot. Oh, yeah. great, 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 great shooter. Um, and then, yeah, we've got Totahi. Um, Sam Gallagher has come back. I don't know if you remember him. Oh, yeah. And who else am I kidding? Another young guy, Hugo, who Hugo. my whole team oh, yeah. just, like, he talks more trash than anyone I've ever had. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> he's so funny. Everyone loves him, so... Huh? He's a yeah. big blue guy. Oh, um, dude. Okay. Whoever he's guarding, he will lock up at training. Yeah. He will lock them up. And then they get they get really angry and they'll either start saying things or they'll lift their game. And then that spreads to the rest of the group. So the defensive yeah. intensity just gets – like, I love – like, he's playing. He's, like, my first or second off the bench. He might have a chance yeah. to start. There could be times where I've got two year tens in my starting five this year, Jack, which is pretty crazy. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I've got that twelve month kind of goal focus um, anyway. Um, but yeah, Louis Gordon's going to be a beast in two years, man. Like, yeah, like, Louis uh, is insane. Really. Yeah, he's going to be he's going to be really good. I had him in that 15s Canterbury group last year, and he's he was really good. Yeah. Um, I think he's he's super smart as well. So he'd just be good coming out of pick and rolls, even at the senior level. Yeah. It'd be really. Oh, yeah, I'm chucking him straight into the deep end, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> been working with him quite a bit. And uh, but yeah, Jake Banks, Kobe Northmore, uh, playing fantastic. Louis Delatoire is incredible offensive player. Um, but Peter Taylor, people will sleep on him, but man, he he's gonna he's gonna be that guy that hits five threes a bunch of games. Like he, yeah, he yeah. he's like fifty percent from three at trainings. He he does it. You you like, brought him in like last season, eh? Yeah, so he wasn't in their group. And then for 20s, we tried to have two even groups in 20s. We had a, a yellow and a blue team. And I had the yellow team, which was the young guys. And um, by the end of the year, we were playing really good. We won that. We had a really good good chemistry with that young group. Um, but they're not here anymore. Um, but we, we one week we had five players. And so I went to, I think, 17 Bs and seen this kid and called him in. And he had like 17 points in his first game in 20s. But, um yeah, so he ended up coming along on tournament, and um, yeah, they've all just improved a lot. Like, I think. yeah, the games will be cool when you're versing like yeah, Tane and stuff. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, get game two. Like when um, if like Stat come to have Stat. a home game at um, oh. that would get pretty heated. That would be wild. <laughs> I'm gonna make sure I'm there, eh? Yeah. I'll be I'll be giving my I'll be giving my guys do's and don'ts before the game about what they can and can't say. But um, yeah, yeah, I I think uh. The difference with this is Tane is still close with all of them. And, like, Benji and Tane live 100 metres away from me. Um, you know, we went out for KFC. Um, not long ago, yeah. so I just pulled the lockdown. So we're still all close. And, um, and Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, but, <laughs> man, what a great situation to be in, though, right, Jack? If we could dish out some scholarships and things oh. like that, be pretty handy. <laughs> it would be. Nice. But, nah, but I nah, think I never... Pretty- Never really considered considered it, but man, it's pretty crazy the amount of talent that those schools are bringing in. That's for sure. Oh, I think they're kind of they're both private schools, but they're quite different. You know what I mean? Like the, the, I've got less. I think Christ are going to be a scary team this year, though. Um, they've got like a really good ro- eight rotations, pretty good. I don't. Yeah, scary. Now they're Josh, gonna be really good. Josh Book's probably sixteen now too. So. <laughs> Nick Book, Nick Books, he's he's like six five. He he'll be starting at the senior level, I reckon, this year, and he's a year ten, wow. bottom wow. age year ten. He's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, he's crazy. Yeah, so I think I might be sick that day when we play then. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but it's it's good. It's good to have a team that's doing well, and and the, the, they'll have the pressure on them. Um, but yeah, the only teams that I'm not going to look forward to on a Difficulty level will be um, always Middleton because of intensity and uh, in Christ. But I think also the team that I think will, St. Bede's will be very difficult. Um, yeah, I think everyone's sleeping on them. They'll be they'll play pretty aggressive. I think um, they because yeah, they won that 17th competition last year. Oh. Yeah, they've definitely got a good group. 
that was a great game. So one of the questions I had for the Williamson household was, are there any other sports that are played or like that you guys go hard with or is it just all basketball? Now, me, me and Jim are really real into our cricket. Like, I used to play a lot in high school. We haven't played a lot since, but just like into just watching it and talking smack about it and playing a lot of backyard cricket and go yeah. down to the nets and that kind of thing. That would be, I don't, me and Jim, probably that's our other sport that I'm really yeah, into. Definitely. Like a, just I a play, one. Um, I play volleyball. Um, I'm playing in the senior team this year. So I played volleyball for a couple of years. I don't take it that seriously, though. It's just a bit of fun. And, um, yeah, it's pretty good culture at Middleton. So it's fun to play. And it's good to play another sport sometimes, have a break from basketball. And I just picked up four I think I saw you there one time, Joe. Um, yeah, you had the superstar group of Middleton athletes playing core ball. <laughs> yeah, we've had all the ballers playing core ball, kind of cleaned up everyone, so <laughs> it's yeah. a bit of fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was down there, I saw that. It's, it's cool to see that culture, like, not just with basketball, that it was a yeah. core ball team. I think most of you were basketballers, you and Katie Joe and all that, but yeah. uh, it was, you guys, were, it was still like a Middleton team. You guys, it was more lax, like you guys were just chilling and because you were just crushing everybody, but. Yeah, we're just chilling and dominating. It's good times. <laughs> yeah, it's quite healthy, you know, to have, an, to do multi sports or have like a different sport to do. Like it was yeah. just all basketball all the time, especially in high school, that's pretty fun, pretty intense. Yeah. So is, yeah. is your, is your mum coaching the girls program this year? Yeah. Yeah, she won't be. She she coached our club team last year, but she won't be doing that this year. I think she's just focusing on our school team and the Waitaha team she's coaching as well. Yeah, yeah. this team be pretty good this year. Right? Yeah, we should be. Um, I reckon this year's our year. <laughs> nice. We, we fell off a bit short last year in our quarter in um, wheel and trophy, but we just have like last year was our best year in terms of culture. Just. Um, we had an amazing culture last year and it was like the first like Middleton homegrown girls team to go to Nets, I think. Well, like in, in a while since the, since the old days, you know? So, um, yeah, we're continuing, continuing on that culture. So I can we'll have a really good team this year. Awesome. Yeah. What's the, what's the girls, who are the girls teams to beat this year? Are Rangira quite competitive this year? Um, yeah, it was, uh, I think Girls High are ranked um, number one again. They'll be, they'll, they, they lost a few last year, but they'll still be good. Just, they got good coaches and good guards. And then um, Stat Girls, Stat Girls will be really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Rangiora as well. They're, they're always really gritty. They did lose their best guard, but they, they've got really good young guards. So I think it'll be really close with the top teams. Right. Yeah, yeah, I think it could go like it could go many ways. <laughs> it's a bit of an adjustment looking at girls basketball. I've been watching lots of um, USA high school teams play. Um, yeah, it's so different. Like so different. Yeah. I feel I feel like it's um, there's like it's it's a bit more like it was good because I, I I got to see your mum coach at that white white to with uh, Mal, is it Mel, Diana, and oh, yeah. uh, they let me come along and observe because the, the reason why I was there that day, my was to just watch like what the girls' trainings were like and what they worked on. But um, I was kind of blown away. It was quite a. Um, uh, it looked like I was going into an Australian like Queensland, you know, under twenty girls training. Like it was intense yeah. and really, really specific and really detailed. Um, so it's quite impressive to watch. I know that's not necessarily how I have to coach a girls team, but um, yeah, I've been studying up hard because I'm not going to just assume basketball is basketball and do the same yeah. things to both teams. But um, yeah, no, it's a bit different. Yeah, it's definitely different. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I'm trying to teach my girls when they lay up to slap the backboard um, just to intimidate the other team in the warm ups. And um, pretty easy at Cathedral College. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually really. Right. I think I can dunk on that. <laughs> Yeah, I think that, I, I don't know, well, I'm not jumping at the moment, so I don't know, but um, <laughs> I love the gym there, like it's, um, yeah, no, it's cool. if you get some people up top there, it will be a good, yeah. good little environment there, but. Um, get all the Filipinos down, <laughs> that'll be crazy. <laughs> yeah, yep. they go, they love basketball there. So, they do, yeah, for sure. And so is it yourself and Zach at Middleton this year again, Jack? 
Yep, yep, sure is. Yeah. Do you have any, um, how long do you think you'll be running that voice program for? Do you think you'll, is it a long term thing for you? Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. Foreseeable future, definitely. I, yeah, it's hard to know how, how long. Um, if another guy, if another coach comes through and is real keen to take over in the next few years, you know, you can't you can't really predict it. But definitely in the next couple of years, I was really keen to try and um, get a th- like a qualify for nationals five years in a row. I thought that was a would be a really cool goal. And so this is the third year, so I, I definitely a five year kind of cycle. I think would be pretty good. So another couple of years probably. This is the fourth year this year, isn't it? And now third third year of just just me and Zach. I was with, oh, with yeah. Bennett in 2017. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a very solid, that's, yeah, that's, that would be an impressive. Middleton have been, um, man, I remember playing Middleton with, like, Dave Harrison when I was in high school. <laughs> I, this, this is a true story. Um, so I was one of those kids that finished high school and then did an extra year. Um, it was a bit more oh, common. Really? Thing, right? Yeah. And yeah. Um, I, I was a year 14 <laughs> scheme. Yeah. Year 14. And so um, I was deciding between middle, because I went to Kaiapoi, but I was going to either Middleton or Adenui. And Dave Harrison, bless his heart, started sending me programs. To like, And I was basically signed up at Middleton. And um, then last yeah. minute, I went to, some of my Kaiapoi friends went to Adenui. So I ended up going to Adenui at the last second. But um, I oh, almost went to Middleton for a year. Oh, shit. So, yeah. Who, who, who would have been in that Middleton team that year? Um... I'm pretty sure that's Jeremy Kench. Uh, yep, oh, man. Jared Bowden. Yeah, very nice group. I don't know if you guys know much about Jared Bowden, but my goodness, he was he was an unbelievable two-guard. He, went, he's, he lives in the States now. Um, but, man, he was incredible. He was like 30 points at the, at the shooting guard. And yeah. so um, they had a really nice team. Yeah, I remember watching him. I've got him, I've got him in my all-Middleton uh, first team. We, Good call. Me and Bennett's throw um, throw teams around like we got like an all all first through five Middleton team. Yeah, I'll have to send them through to you sometime. If yeah, man. Good. I, a lot of I, data. Yeah, I agree with um, Jared Bowden in that first team. He was he was legit. He he was like um like dunking. He was like Greg Roger. He was dunking on people. But he had the silkiest <laughs> three. Like he was the best shooter. He was super <laughs> legit. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I remember he played that one year for the Cougars, I think. Came back here, was it? Right. He just a one year or something? And I remember watching him. He was just, yeah, so nice. Yeah, and then Adrian Taylor was playing for that team too. And, uh, and in high school, I thought Adrian Taylor was pretty good. But he actually translated really well into the NBL because of his um, shooting. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was, yeah. Forgot about that. He must have been very stacked then. Yeah, and um, I talk about this all the time, but um, Dave Harrison did this. I, I think about this to this day, <laughs> and I, I, it's one of my goals. Like, I'm, one year I'm going to do this. Um, Dave Harrison would have uh, a five-for-five five sub every quarter. So he had a starting five and a bench, and they were equal strength, and he'd do yeah. five-for-five five subs. And it was the craziest thing ever, and it worked. That's crazy. It That's worked. Really true, yeah. yeah, so I've seen people try and do it now. Um, Sorry, I've seen people do like a five for five sub only when they're disgusted at the five on the court and yeah. they off, or it's like a blowout. And they, but that's what Middleton did. Um, I love that strategy. You know, it's insane. Yeah, yeah. But it worked. And like, if you've got if you've got ten guys playing twenty minutes, of course you can play way harder defense. Yeah, yeah. You had role players on each unit, and it just it was cool, man. Like, yeah. yeah. I don't know if Bennett's has got any of those game films in his archive, but um, that'd be, yeah, that'd be something for you guys to check out. That was interesting. Yeah. That is crazy. Yeah, you've got to have the right group, a good deep group. And like, I guess if you're pressing in that, it's probably pretty beneficial, but I haven't seen it done successfully in, in a long time. No. Yeah. Usually when there's a five-man sub, it's just kind of like laughable. Yeah, you just like chuck it on at the end yeah. of it's a blowout. Well, I even find as a coach, if I try and sub like three guys in at the same time, it's very difficult to maintain mm. what we were doing on court. Like, yeah. it can drop yeah. off. Like, it's it's risky putting three guys in at the same time because they, you know, they might get confused for a couple of positions or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I always try and do maybe two people max at a time. But um, same. I always go max max two. Yeah, three yeah. is tough. I can't imagine five. And also, I yeah. I, want, I want too many guys to play big minutes. Um, so again, they must have just had that depth. But you know, I've, to have your 
your tenth guy play the same amount of minutes as your one guy is pretty crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. That's but, fun. So yeah, um, I mentioned this, and I, I think it was my coach's chat with Bennett and um, Pete Van Hassel, um, and I mean I talked about it in that chat too when I was interviewing them, and they've heard that and hit me up about it. So um. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, man, far out. It's good talking to you guys. I just keep on... Yawn and yawn and yawn. No, we yeah. love... <laughs> Seven and yawn. Um, Runs. Yeah. Um, yeah they've, made, they've done signage, and it's like... Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Night Shift, episode 008, uh, the Williamsons, or something like that. So oh, That's classic. <laughs> at the beginning, um, so they got a real kick out of doing that, because they have to do creative stuff for part of their school. Um so they did. They did one of the intros, but they love doing it. So, on. so they'll be in your media team. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My son's already asking for more money, though. So, <laughs> yeah. he's, he's all about dollars. <laughs> he thinks about dollars way too. For a nine-year-old, he thinks about dollars way too much. Speaking of dollars, um, Jack uh, Tim Bennett is trying to say that you should be um, you should run Canterbury basketball one of these days. Yeah, <laughs> Jeez. I think it, they yeah the, when the when the role came up was it like mid last year he was he was saying that but nah it would have been it would have been way too early it's definitely a job I think I'd enjoy later down the track but yeah. I don't know I didn't have the business experience then definitely need a couple more years under the belt I think yeah so this do you think and um, so I think you should run Canterbury basketball one day and I think. Um, if, if you two can't figure out what to do in life, you guys should get into commentary, man. Like, um, <laughs> cause think about it. This is what's rare, right? Uh, basketball IQ, <laughs> basketball IQ with a sense of humor, with a quick wit, like to have that three, that's, that's the triple threat. I think, um, you know, and so you guys are perfect. And, um, um, Ash in the other game, Ashley Shawbridge, that was, it was it was great commentary. I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah it, was fun. it was fun. Yeah, I think it is, especially when you know the players. So you know, it's not like it's not a big deal if you rip someone out. Like when we're yeah, calling yeah. Ben a spaghetti noodle, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to. I try to keep it positive because I, you know, I, if someone gets shouted out, I want it to be like a, you know, a compliment. Like if yeah, yeah, yeah. If I'm shouting out Middleton, I'm not saying about you know. Number 14's a bum. I'm yeah. <laughs> trying, to, trying to keep it positive, so um, hopefully there's no hatred towards. Yeah. I get some angry parent hitting me up. Um, yeah, oh, that'd be nice. Yeah. What was interesting is I had um, so Tane and Totahi popped around yesterday. I didn't even open the door on them. I just like opened it a crack so I could hear them talking and they could see me through the glass. I was like social distancing. Um, <laughs> but um, Tane was saying that he heard that instead of South Islands this year, they're going to go off, they could potentially go off the Thompson Trophy rankings. So the, the finalists for that might be the people that go through from Christchurch. And then I think, I think he said like one from Nelson and one from Dunedin or something like that. So I don't know where he got that from, but there's a couple of interesting theories about what might happen. Yeah, I think definitely heard theories like that as well. Um, it would be, I mean, it would be, it'd be pretty rough, but if they're going to have a, a smaller group at nationals, I guess that would have to be the way. Only take four from the South Island or something like that, or maybe even three. Um, oh, so there might be less people, so not 24 teams at nationals potentially. Yeah, I think they were trying to, sh to cut that down a little bit. Okay. But I mean, you, you never really know. That was that was the talk back when we were like level four, and there was way more uncertainty. But now it's looking a lot different. I don't yeah. really see why in six months, if we've still got the borders shut, then why couldn't we have a regular size nationals? I don't really know. But mm. oh. hopefully, it's um. I just can't see why they just can't push it back. And I know that there's a clash with summer sports, but like, who cares if for a month or two it's a bit like crossovers and stuff like that, like. I just reckon have a regular length season, but just push it back. Um, Basketball's the priority, I guess. <laughs> what's, what priority? Basketball's the priority. <laughs> I think so, you know. Um, I think it should be. It's cute that other people playing different sports, but really, <laughs> what about basketball and what about basketball's needs? That's what I think we should be thinking. Yeah, yeah let's be real here. Come on. Yeah, there is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, yeah. We have to go for a bit of a weird format where, like, because you're not allowed 10 in a gym. We, and we got 16 in a squad, do we have to split them eight and then use both gyms and just do skills and that kind of thing? Right. And the, the school was all right with that. But yeah, yeah 
definitely couldn't do a, a regular training. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully um, in a week or two. Like, yeah. yeah. If, if they're going to have competition games in three and a half weeks, then yeah. you have to have at least two weeks of regular training. So be... Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's going to be ugly. Yeah. I don't think we're putting on a full court press in game one. I don't think they're oh, all no. but I might be having to run 12 sub, uh, 12, 12 deep on that first game. <laughs> yeah. I think it's going to be also hard just not to give, you know, in basketball, how we do the slapped hand kind of hug thing. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, that's going to be hard not to slap hands and things like that. I'm not quite sure how that's all going to work. Some people will just forget. They'll see people and automatically just try and do that. And then yeah, other people, yeah. There's such a range. Some people just don't are acting like there's nothing to worry about. And then other people, you know, I went to a meeting last week and there were people there that had, um, you know, masks, gloves. So I was kind of taken aback by that because I just, you know, that's not where I'm at mentally, but I'm, yeah. I'm being smart about things and using hand sanitizer and all that. But um, yeah, some people are still pretty freaked out. So um, it'll be weird. Really cool. So school kicks back on, on Monday at Middleton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i think half half the teenagers are sleeping until midday now so yeah well no reason to get up early so <laughs> yeah we put the uh training at 7 a.m on monday as well so those guys those kids that have been doing that are going to struggle yeah true true yeah, yeah that'll be yeah. Um, yeah unfortunately can't pour them a cup of coffee either so um <laughs> yeah um, when we have a morning session, I'm rocking up with my little thing of coffee that I get to take with me. And yeah, I, I think morning trainings are the best though. It's, so um, good. it's my preference. Yeah. They make you feel so good. Eh? Like I'm not much of a morning person, but like once I've done a morning workout, it just makes me feel so much better. Yeah. I think so. And then also sometimes, you know, teenagers, if they've had to listen to teachers all day and you have a training straight after school, um, and, you know, I, I do my famous 45-minute um, speech about something. Um, you know, you can start seeing the eyes glaze over and people kind of, like, like looking off into the distance, thinking about yeah. anything apart from what I'm saying. So, <laughs> um, but yeah. Yeah, we had some, we had, like, a weekly scrimmage last year in the morning and it got, yeah, it got pretty heated, eh? Yeah. Hmm. And, like, some 1v1s and stuff. Yeah. A lot of trash talk going on. It was yeah. good. We, we framed it up. I, I think morning's the best, and um, but it's just students don't usually like it, and some of the parents will give me heaps about having to get up earlier and stuff like that. But um, when I started at Burnside, um, they were a volleyball school, and we didn't have a senior basketball team, and they were they just didn't want to give me any gym space at all. So I was like, "What's available?" And they were like, "I think Wednesday morning, Friday morning." I'm like, "Cool, book us in." And so oh, yeah. that that group, we just got used to morning trainings, and I just loved it. Like I. I just, I preferred it. I, I felt like there was no one else at the school. So there weren't people walking in and out of the gym and just all those yeah. things. That I feel like people just aren't as focused. Um, but that's my preference. I think morning trainings were the best, but. Um, oh, yeah. 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 Seven o'clock. You might, you might have a couple of people like coming in, like sprinting full speed, like three minutes past seven, you know, <laughs> sprinting, trying to get in on time. And so, you know, <laughs> he's not nice. He's not yeah. nice. So, yeah, my punishments are pretty harsh for being late to training. And if you're a no-show, uh, I talked about this in one of my other chats, Jack. I've got a three-strike rule. If you miss three trainings, you cut. Like, it doesn't matter who you are. Yeah, um, good call. That's, that's not if someone messages me and says, hey, coach, I've got um, an exam tomorrow. I can't come. Cool. Without notice. Yeah, yeah with notice. Yeah. Sweet ass. I don't even I, – I never mind anyone doing that. But, um, yeah, no-shows or lateness. You're in trouble. No-shows, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Three I can't imagine doing there. that. Like, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know why people, like, I don't know what goes through their head. Because, like, especially, like, you know, in our family or just in the, in the teams I've been in, like, it's just beyond me to, like, not show up to a training and not say anything about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Someone can, like, feel okay doing that. Yeah. And, well, the first 15 minutes of training is when I'll talk as well. So, yeah. <laughs> so I've just broken down what we're learning and why, and then someone comes in and it's just like, yeah. Uh, yeah you guys are ranked fifth is that right or fifth again oh we're, sorry we were we were ranked i think we're fourth this year i ranked fourth um we're fourth we're behind shirley yeah fourth oh so some beads are ranked fifth oh sorry 
I don't, I'll have to have a look again. I can't remember. Oh, we were definitely fifth last year. Mm-hmm. Have to have to find it somewhere. Surely. So Shirley did. I can't remember if it's. I definitely think Middleton will beat Shirley. Yeah, they have Greg and Kayla, but that's it. Yeah. What about the girls, Maya? We're about to you guys rank. I think we're fifth. Fourth or fifth. I'm not sure. I can't remember. See, that's good motivation for you guys because you guys yeah. are definitely not a fifth. They put Rangiora above us, and that was kind of – that hit me when I saw that. I was like, no way. We're not losing because last year we played them um, We played them at Rangiora in Wheeling Trophy, and we did not play a good game, and we lost to them. And then we lost to them at Nationals in our last game. And – so I'm not losing to Rangi or ever again in my career. <laughs> Sam, <laughs> living stoked about yeah, that. Yeah, oh, just so like because we could have beat them as well. You know, like when you lose to a team that you could have beat, it's just so frustrating. So now um, that's not happening. Not happening. <laughs> Sorry, we're actually we're we're ranked third this year. That's what I, I remember. Oh. that. Oh shit! Oh my bad. We're above Beads and Shirley, so yeah, yeah, it was a little bit, little bit less of a chip on the shoulder for the boys this year. But I mean, it's still something. Still, still third. So. Yeah, oh no, that's uh, I should have I should have checked that again. I thought you guys were ranked um, fifth or sixth. My bad. Um, it's definitely a real cl- that's a, that's a definitely a pretty close. Who's at six? Two through two through five six. Yeah, six is uh, Crushish Boys. Crushish Boys. Okay. Yeah, I can't believe you guys are tenth, man. Who's who's this ranking who's, committee? Who's picking these teams? I mean, I, I... James with in, probably. He's James, yeah. Is he, is he the ranking committee, or is he, like, other people? Yeah, who knows? Who knows? Who's know. even between... Who's, between, who's like, 7th, 8th, and ninth before St. Thomas? 7th seventh, seventh equal Cashmere and Rangura, ninth Ashburton College. That's got to hurt, Joe. And then 10th uh, <laughs> St. Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. No, that's cool. So I'll remember that. I'll be, I'll be printing <laughs> something out this year too, Jack, I think. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Classic. And to in college, that's pretty tough. That's pretty tough. But to be fair, um, like if they're looking purely at the roster that we had last year and, and who is taken off that roster, it's like um, I think seven of our top eight players from court, court time-wise. So I, I can kind of understand that. And yeah. Again, like a perfect example is Jake Banks. Like Jake Banks is somebody, if they were looking at the team on paper, they'll be thinking that he, because he was such a rookie last year and he, he didn't get on the court every game for us. He got on the court sometimes. But man, this year, he, dude's super legit. So um, he'll, he'll be putting up some big points. And Louis Delatois is kind of similar. Like he didn't play big minutes, but um, yeah, he went, in, he went to the Philippines for a couple of months over Christmas and... Um, yeah, he can. He's a bucket. So um, is that with with uh, Mark Dickel? Yeah, yeah, that would have been good for him. Yeah, it was, and um, so yeah, he came back even better and better than I thought. And um, so yeah, it's nice though. I, I do. I, I enjoyed it. I got a good laugh out of it. Um, but then I do understand where they're coming from. So, but I love it. It's a nice feeling. Like um, yeah, there's just zero pressure. And if we can upset one of those teams in the top four or top five, it's going to be a, you know, big, big win for our school. So, um, yeah, it's fun. Yeah. It, who knows? We might, we might be able to upset somebody first up. I bet you that I, okay, check this out. I have to cut this out as well. My bad. Um, I, <laughs> I saw you said that like 10 times already. <laughs> yeah. My bad. I'm feeling honest and open today, but, um, well, but. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. So mm. now nah, it'll be fun. It'll be interesting. It'll be, the first res, the results for like the first five or six games will be kind of funny. And, um, yeah. I think it'll be with the gym, what gym you're playing in. And I think for us and for you guys at St. Thomas, because we both have good gyms as well, you end up playing a lot of your Thompson Trophy games at home. True. Yeah. Like last year, I think we played 80% of our Thompson Trophy games at yeah. home or something like that. So that was even worse. Like we were like, uh, you know, me and Zach were saying we want to play any game away, like give us more away games just because you've got to get used to other gyms and other rims. But <laughs> because we've yeah. got a good gym and mo- most schools don't, it's, um, we've got a lot of home games. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like, I remember um, my last year um, coaching Burnside, we, for some reason, if Cashmere played us at Burnside, we would whoop them. 
but if we play Kashmir at Kashmir, they'd beat us. And these are years we'd be winning, but we couldn't beat we couldn't beat Kashmir at Kashmir. They were just I don't know what it was, um, but they couldn't beat us at Burnside. So then we'd get to tournament, and then we'd find out really what it was. Yeah. So it was um, a game. So, and it's, but I mean, again, it's good. Like for Middleton, if you guys have a girls game and a boys game, it's good that the girls can support the boys and then the boys can support the girls. Like yeah. there's, heaps of, there's heaps of, you know, pros and cons, but um, I personally think it's, um, it was better when it was just all Saturday. Um, I like that better. I think that was. I agree. I guess the growth of basketball, the Tuesday has been good. Eh? Just the amount of people, like exposure and, you know, the, mm. the hype it gets and just the positivity around it is, is definitely a benefit. But it's true. Yeah. And you got yeah, like our team utilized the crowd a lot. Yeah. Last year. Yeah. It's like, yeah. And then like having that, having that culture between the boys and the girls helped because we were able to like to support each other heaps. Like when we went away to the tournament, you know, I'd say us Middleton girls probably were pretty goaded with our supporting and cheerleading, um, especially at South Island. So Having yep. that culture is really cool between the boys and the girls, especially at home. Yeah. Yeah, not many people do it like Middleton do it though. You guys, know. you guys do it properly. Um, it's very sure. American. Middleton's always been very American to me, and I I like that America, like how they're really team spirit and how they're not afraid to like um, support and like. Yeah. It's it'd be cool to see more more schools like that. Like, lots of kids don't hit. Lots of kids don't want to stand up and whoop whoop if you know the boys or girls seem are playing they kind of just sit there real politely and you know yeah it's good to see yeah. teams get rowdy but um oh, yeah whole gym gets a bit rowdy like that thompson trophy final was a bit of a feud going on um in the stands <laughs> well i think that was the um you guys said i think it gave middleton a really big psychological advantage i think yeah playing, playing middleton last year was even though i didn't personally get to see it because when you guys played st thomas's i wasn't there for that game um that Thompson Trophy game at St. Thomas's. Um, so I missed that game, but um, it, from what I watched, it was like an experience. So when you played Middleton, it was different. Like you had to mentally prepare yourself. You had to, there was a fear that if you didn't bring it at the beginning of the game, you're going to be in big trouble. So um, I think that's, yeah. No, that, I thought like going into St. Thomas, I thought it was, it was going to be real rowdy and stuff in there and I was going to get abused and stuff like that. But yeah, there wasn't much of a crowd. Like, Oh, okay. They, 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 some games they had really good crowd support. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty rowdy. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if you, in the future, if you can get like heaps of lads from St. Thomas down to the, down to the gym, that could definitely help, I reckon. Well, at your, um, at the quarterfinal at Cows, you had a really good group of St. Thomas oh, boys. Yeah, um, yeah. That was loud. That was a good game yeah. to watch. Yeah. Yeah. Apart from a lot of zone, but it was definitely a good game to watch. The intensity was really good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is there any team, do you think, uh, out of that sort of middle pack, Jack, from like Rangura, Boys High, um, who were some of those other teams? Uh, yeah, Rangura, Kashmir, Boys Kashmir. High, surely. I mean, it's, I, I don't know a lot about those younger groups. I know because both those, yeah. Rangura and Kashmir, lost a lot of guys. So I don't know much about the younger guys. I wasn't really involved in 17s much last year. Um, yeah. But in terms of the upper, like the Beads and the Shirley, I think those two teams particularly could be could be really good. That's that's going to be a that's a really tough one through five, and then there's a couple of guys outside that one through five that'll push up as well. So I think it's going to be tough. Yeah. Real tough. I really don't know what to expect with um with Saint Beads, um because I know they were really good in that twenties grade last year, but um they never really like in Saint Thomas they never really seem to do seem to play the same style of basketball. I don't know what it, what it was, but... Yeah. Um, I think that St. Bede's group are going to be surprisingly good. I think any time you've got a group that are returning and they haven't had a chance to be in that top tier for a wee while, I think they will... I don't think they're going to... It was interesting because they played us, right? Um, we only had five players and I got Peter Taylor, who'd never played for senior basketball or even trained with us. I got him to play for us that game. So we're, we, we had six. And Hunter, who was one of our main guys, picked up three fouls in like the first two minutes. And then I subbed him back and he picked up another foul. And I subbed him back and he got another foul. So he, he basically played like three minutes. So we had five guys playing that whole game. And um, they weren't our strongest five. And I think St. Beads just beat us. But they celebrated 
so hard, like way too hard. Um, <laughs> I think it just, it shows you that group that are just so sick of not being that competitive and they just badly want to beat people. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw a little bit of that kind of mongrel in there and I think they're kind of, yeah, I think they'll be better than what people think. Oh yeah, and I, I hope they are. They're a great kid. Like I've had a bit to do with um, Kurt and Walt. No, they're just both such good dudes. So mm. I hope they do, yeah. they do well. Don't know too much about the rest of the guys, but yeah. In terms of Shirley, I you know I just I don't know what some of those guys have been up to over the last couple of months with um with Caleb and Greg, but they could be super dangerous as well. Yeah. yeah. Should be a should be an interesting competition this year. I think it's probably one of the more un, it's pretty uncertain this year. I what yeah. I yeah, I think, yeah, that's why the results will be just interesting. I think I don't think anyone will even have a good picture after a couple of weeks because I think there'll be, yeah, I think there'll be, it'll be upset city. I think, yeah, those rankings will could be totally different in a month's time. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting. Mm. Are you going to come down and um, and watch lots of, what's it get? Are you going to be at the games, Jimmy? Dude, I'll be at every Middleton Tuesday night game. Yeah. Dreaming. Are you still going to get in there at practices and things, or nah? Yeah, well, I'll see if I can make a few of the trainings, rack the boys up, <laughs> get them, Take get them going. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Our boys will be, they all play in their, like, 23s trainings. They, they train with Prems, and Jimmy's in that yeah. group. So they'll get, a, they'll get a few, um, you know, a few bruises from Jim there. So they, hopefully they can learn a bit from that and bring it back to our trainings. Bring it back to the, the, the child's play. <laughs> <laughs> nah. We got a couple of guys this year that have like, cause I mean, Jim Jim's role last year we're kind of bringing that dog mentality, the gator mentality he talks about. But um, we got a few guys this year when we were talking about roles that they just that was their role that they wanted to fill was that that void of the dog dog mentality type thing this year. So it should, could be interesting. Who, going? who fills that? <laughs> who was that? Oh um oh I, sh- I, I can't dis- I can't disclose it, but let's just say the first game you'll find out. I'm sure. Yeah, okay. Okay. I'll be there. Um, do you have many guys that will be key key contributors this year, um, Jack, that, that barely played last year or were, like, at the end of the bench? Um, yeah, I, th- I think we definitely will have some guys kind of slotting in to, a, a like, a, you know, that more of the 15-minute to 20-minute type role, guys. But um, yeah. I think we had a few young guys throughout the year that started picking up more of a role last year, and most of those guys are kind of carried over. So a lot of the scoring cool. will come from guys that did play some minutes last year. Mm-hmm. Um, but there will be some guys that will play, yeah, 15 to 20 minutes that didn't play much at all last year. So it'll be pretty interesting to see how they go. And, yeah. um, you know, our, our top, our, our rotation seven is like, we, it's not really sorted. So it'll be the first few trainings, it'll be a good kind of fight. And throughout the season, a good fight to kind of prove yourself and jump in that, that, that lineup, that rotation. Yeah, that's what I'm most interested in at trainings when we start. My gap between the eighth the eighth person currently and the 13th per- person, there's nothing, there's nothing separating that group. So I don't even know who's going to be, you know, filling those spots for our first game. But um, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's fun though, isn't it? Like um, getting somebody into, getting somebody comfortable into that senior, into the, I just love the, the, for me personally, the challenge of trying to get people comfortable playing and playing the right way. Yeah. Like it's a huge ask and I know that sometimes it's too difficult to do but um, I love that challenge of you know like yeah. um, you know one guy that's going to be starting and playing 30 plus minutes a game but last year he didn't know if he's going to get on the court from game to game I, yeah. it's going to be exciting for me to see those guys get that opportunity and challenge and, yeah it'll be yeah. cool to see same yeah. 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 I kind of don't know what to expect in that first game or two you know and um, <laughs> yeah like some of them, like the, the positive for those guys this year without those the boys that left is they get to take shots this year. Like with those That's those true. guys, those guys would have been shooting a high volume of shots. So yeah. um, it's exciting for me to see some of those guys. Like some of them probably every time I call a sub, they'll be looking at me or start walking towards the bench thinking they're coming off. But I'll be like, Nah, dude, you're like <laughs> you're still out there. Like you're not coming off. So um, that's gonna be fun for me to see. So. I, I had organised a whole bunch of preseason games to try and kick, um, iron out all that stuff, but now you're probably going to see that in game one of Thompson Trophy, I'll be having to, um, yeah, it will be, it'll be, I'll be, hundred percent same for us. I think the first few games could be pretty interesting. Trying to implement all your yeah. systems that you haven't had time to do throughout the games, it'll, it'll definitely take a while, be ugly for a while. But like you said, you yeah. can't iron them out. 
thrown in the deep end. Yeah. You'll either, you'll either be pleasantly surprised or you'll be trying not to break a clipboard for the first couple yeah. of years. That's definitely true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll be just having to, I'll be having to focus on my breathing probably. Just, you know. Yeah. <laughs> not throwing a chair. <laughs> yeah. Even to get a joke. <laughs> yeah. If I do a Bobby Knight and chuck a chair out onto the court in my first game, then I, you know that I've <laughs> not mentally prepared myself for it. So. And Mr. Bennett's did that a few years ago as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, me and Tim Bennett would always joke about we, 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 gave it, we gave each other a one credit that every year we're allowed like a one time just blow out like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah I remember Tim calling me one day saying you know how we got one credit yep I used it tonight and then he just went off for like an hour <laughs> and he was outraged about and that's that's actually so true that's that's hilarious you say that because tim always used to just have that one moment i remember i've seen it a couple of times since when i used to play it he just it's and it, and it always works though like it's always justified and it turns a team around i've seen it i've seen it spark a couple of runs yeah i i haven't seen you i haven't seen you do it though joe i'm, I'm looking forward to that at some stage yeah <laughs> well one of the games i posted uh, one of the throwback games was uh, the only ever technical foul I've ever had as a coach, and that was a young Brad Clive. He looked like he, yeah, was, I remember that. he looked like he was seven years old. Um, <laughs> I was standing at halfway with my hands on my face, just looking at him like I wanted to scream at him. And I was so I was so embarrassed by myself to like do that kind of thing. So um, yeah, I've only had one technical foul as a coach ever, but um, yeah, <laughs> this year, I don't think I'll be losing my my mind this year because it's kind of like it's a fun kind of we're tenth, and I just have to try and help us get better every training, every game. So it's yeah. different yeah. to, you know, if you've got yeah. that competitive mentality and, you know, you're, you're giving a terrible, terrible defensive effort or something like that. I, I think I lost my mind once and that was at Kashmir and they beat us by 30 and we were the deep that we just weren't boxing out and we just weren't playing defense and it was very frustrating it was like a progression thing. So I call a timeout and I'm like, hey, lads, if you guys don't start boxing out and playing some defense, we've got some problems. And then I keep <laughs> repeating myself. And so I think by the third or fourth quarter, I just like, I lost it at them. So um, yeah, that was, that was my blowout. But um, yeah, I've got some stories that I won't put on here. There's some really well-respected coaches that you guys will look up to. And I could tell you some hilarious things I've seen them do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I remember one guy punching a wall at South Island. That was amazing. Oh, yeah. I've seen quite a few broken clipboards, but um, personally, I've had my same clipboard for about eight years, so it's um, well done. so it survived. It's heard me say some terrible things, but I haven't broken it or thrown it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was saying I might um, oh no, I won't tell that story. I have to edit it out. It's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> so much editing to do already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. I've gone. They left us, Jack. <laughs> I guess it is. It is um, one o'clock. I might have to roll out soonish, but yeah, me too, man. I've, I've got my kids in the lounge, so I don't know yeah, what they're up to. Hey, um, sorry, man. I, I actually I was on such a tangent today. Um, I wasn't really well focused on. I probably should have been. But it was more just a chat rather than an interview. No, it's, it's it's good. I love the. Um, I just love the the, the Canterbury basketball Thompson Trophy <laughs> high school ball type chats. It's always good. But, um, I'm yeah. doing that. Yeah, I'm probably going to have to edit out quite a bit, so that's my bad. Yeah. It's, it's all good. At least it was good chat. It's good hearing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, awesome talking to you, man. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see the basketball season back to normal and um, look forward to seeing Middleton Grange do what they do and, and catching up with you down at the courts. Heck yeah, man. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, hopefully we'll get better catch up sometime soon. Maybe it might be that first game. Yeah, man. Hopefully third or fourth game, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Hey, thanks, Jack. Good to see you, man. Yeah, you too. Catch you later, man. Thanks a lot.